What's up everybody, welcome back. It's Brandon with Campbell Fitness. In today's video, I'd like to talk a little bit about sodium. And there's two key things that we're gonna be focusing on. The first of which is, does sodium cause high blood pressure? And the second of which is talking about water retention and bloating. So first things first, let's talk about high blood pressure. Now research has shown in the past that those suffering from hypertension or high blood pressure have been helped by reducing their sodium intake. Now this is a little bit misleading and has led many people to assume that sodium is thus the cause of high blood pressure. This isn't necessarily the case. People who suffer from high blood pressure could be salt sensitive by this point. However, studies have shown that normal individuals who are healthy aren't affected by increasing or high amounts of sodium intake. On the same side of this argument, it's not so much decreasing the salt intake itself that helps so much as it does in balancing out the ratio of sodium to potassium in your diet. So that being said, people that suffer from high blood pressure could thus in fact increase the amount of potassium relative to the amount of salt that they're currently intaking and see a lot of the same benefits. All right, so now that we've talked about sodium and high blood pressure, let's talk about sodium as it relates to retaining water or bloating. Because when a lot of us go on diets, we think that we need to cut down on our sodium intake because what it's gonna do is gonna make us hold more water feel more bloated, or as we've already discussed, have high blood pressure. Well, I'm happy to say that this too is also a big myth. So as far as salt intake goes, it's not so much how much you take in that really does your body any harm. Where you start seeing issues is when you start going extremely low levels of sodium, as sodium is an essential nutrient, or when you vary between high and low amounts and really throw your body off. So why this might be an issue for you if you're increasing or decreasing the amounts of sodium all the time or have an extremely low amount of sodium in your body at any given time, your body actually increases the amount of a hormone called aldosterone. What this hormone is responsible for is regulating and maintaining levels of both water and sodium in your body. So when you go very low sodium or when you deplete water, what happens is your body severely increases the amount of aldosterone in your system. This makes you retain more water and retain more sodium. Now, when you go and add or reintroduce more sodium into your body, it's not used to that amount and your body isn't set up to handle that amount of sodium. That's why typically if you're on a very strict diet and you have a cheat meal or you have food that's very high in sodium, or if you're just on a regular sodium intake and you go and overload sodium in one day, you tend to feel really bloated and full of water the next day. Now obviously over time these levels will settle out and that leads me to my main point about sodium. As long as you keep your level of sodium intake consistent, thus keeping the level of aldosterone in your body consistent, you shouldn't really see any of these problems with bloating. Even if you have a very, very high intake of sodium, it still won't leave you bloated or retaining water because the level of aldosterone in your body, again, which is responsible for maintaining that water and salt balance, will be fairly low. So don't overstress sodium. I know a lot of us, when we go out and buy foods, we look for foods that are low sodium or salt free. That's only really an issue if you're constantly varying the amounts of sodium you take in. So like anything else that we do in this nutrition lifestyle that we're trying to live or in the gym, keep it consistent, keep it simple, and don't overstress. And as always, stay big.